Now, it's a big political news break here on Times Now in a scam that has the potential to embroil Congress's powerful Neta Ahmed Patel. The Enforcement Directorate has carried out its second biggest attachment of case assets ever. The Enforcement Directorate has now attached assets worth nearly 5,000 crore yesterday, which include over 200 bank accounts. Nikunj Garg, Senior Editor, Internal Security, joining us uh, on this broadcast with more details. Nikunj, what really more details do we have and what is this fresh case by the ED all about? Well, this is an ongoing investigation, Aditi. There is no fresh case per se, but what has happened in the further law enforcement action uh, taken by the Enforcement Directorate is that they have carried out their biggest ever attachment post the Nira Modi scam, which was close to some 6,000 crore rupees of fixed and uh, liquid assets. This, in this, nearly 4,700 crore rupees of assets have been attached, of which nearly 4,000 acres of land, uh, totaling up to some 4,000 crore rupees of fixed assets have also been attached. Some 300 bank accounts, 300 shell companies, and multiple other properties of the Sandesara group have been seized. Now, why is this sig a scam significant? The scam is significant because in this entire 5,000 crore rupee loan default scam from the public sector undertaking banks, uh, name of Congress's uh, Supremo's close aide, Mr. Ahmed Patel, has again and again surfaced. At one point of time, one of the individuals uh, arrested and interrogated by the Enforcement Directorate, uh, one Sunil Yadav, who was close aide of Sandesara till the time they fled this country, Chetan and Nitin Sandesara, the then directors of Sterling Biotech Limited, did name Ahmed Patel's son-in-law, Irfan Siddiqui. And he said that he was the beneficiary of large tranches of cash amounts that Sandesara's instructed Sunil Yadav to hand over to this particular individual, that is Ahmed Patel's son-in-law, Irfan Siddiqui. Those statements have been recorded and are part of the further law enforcement process being undertaken by the Enforcement Directorate. Clearly, the allegation is that Mr. Ahmed Patel used this position to influence the public sector banks to give the kind of loan amounts which probably the defaulting company, which is now the Sterling Biotech Limited, was not worthy of and influence was peddled on the public sector banks, which resulted later on these companies defaulting of this entire set of 5,000 crore rupees of loan, which now the Enforcement Directorate claims that through a set of uh, uh, a huge chain of shell companies, nearly 300 of them, starting from Seychelles to UAE to Mauritius, ending up in the United States of America, Sunday Saras siphoned off that money, that money totaling up to 5,000 crore rupees of public money, your money, my money, our viewers' money was siphoned off. And that is now the, this entire exercise of the money, uh, money laundering Prevention Act is to recover those public dues from the Sandesaras who are now fugitive of the law. They have absconded the country, nowhere to be found. Uh, Enforcement Directorate and the Central Bureau of Investigation hot on their trails, but uh, they have gotten them declared public offenders from various courts of law. I'm sorry, proclaimed offenders from the various courts of law, but still, uh, then there's nowhere, they're no, they were nowhere to be seen, not joining any investigations, and that is why the attachment process also assumes significance because this is the only way you can right. ever hope to recover that money which has been siphoned off from the public sector banks. And as I again said, the political contours is that Mr. Ahmed mm. allegations are, since his son-in-law is a direct beneficiary as alleged by one of the persons interrogated, that he peddled his influence to get those loans to Sandesara. So Nikunj, assets worth almost rupees 5,000 crores is what you're saying ha that has been recovered now by the Enforcement Directorate. In fact, Pranesh is also joining us from the newsroom and we are playing out for, for our viewers those exclusive pictures as well. Pranesh, please take us through the pictures. Take you through the pictures, but I also have the ED note with me and I could, if I could just quickly elaborate that, this says... And let's quickly focus on this point that I've highlighted for the benefit of our viewers. Some of the diverted loan funds were also paid to public servants. What does public servants mean? Is all for the viewers to interpret. The ED is also investigating this aspect of the case. 
The Sandeseras are into oil businesses and own several rigs, barges and oil fields across Virgin Islands, Seychelles and USA, among other companies. More than 50 foreign bank accounts and several other assets and properties situated abroad related to the Sterling Group are also under the scanner of the ED. So the UPA bank loan scam is exploding and this probe is now going international. The ED making it very clear that everything even outside India is under their lens. Let me quickly bring you up to speed with the people involved here. Let's look at the flow chart. Chetan Sandesara and Gagan Dhawan. Let's quickly look at this flow chart. And if my director could press the continue button, it will be easier for me to explain. Sandesara group owner Chetan Sandesara and Gagan Dhawan, who was the arrested businessman. Sunil Yadav is the employee of Sandesara group. And it is alleged that Ahmed Patel's son-in-law got kickbacks and we have that link also in this graphic if we could quickly put that out Irfan Siddiqui the son-in-law of Ahmed Patel this man delivered 15 to 25 lakh many times over two years from 2009 and 11 or so the enforcement directorate claims so it is on the basis of this that searches have been carried out in the last one and a half years and yesterday the second biggest attachment by the enforcement directorate over 5,000 crore assets were attached. Back to you. All right, uh, Nikunj continues to stay with us. Nikunj, it was in 2017 that first time we saw the name of Congress uh, a leader, a very close aide of Sonia Gandhi as well, Ahmed Patel cropping up. Not only him, but his, the name of his son, his son-in-law also cropped up when uh, the ED had pointed out an uh, investigation or a case regarding about 5,000 crore rupees of bank loan fraud where they were saying there was a deliberate attempt to violate the foreign exchange laws as well and in in that regard the deposition by Gagan Dhawan also came out to be extremely crucial isn't it Well, absolutely. The one has to keep in mind that unless proven in a court of law, Mr. Ahmed Patel is an innocent man. As, as of now, there are only charges. There are depositions and there are cross-examinations that have to be adjudicated by an independent authority that is a court of law. Mr. Ahmed Patel has consistently denied all wrongdoing. He has also denied that you know Ahmed, uh, Gagan Dhawan was ever his uh, personal secretary or anybody, though he has never denied that he, Gagan was a close aide of his. Unless the investigations go further, and uh, question Mr. Ahmed Patel and the further questioning leads into filing of a charge sheet. Remember certain public sector banks director like one Anoop Garg of uh, a public sector bank has also been arrested in this case by the enforcement directorate. So all those arrests have certainly indicated to the guilt in a particular direction but unless proven in the court of law as I said which will still remain in the realm of allegation only at which Mr. Ahmed Patel have consistently denied. But it is the case of the law enforcement agencies that influence was certainly peddled, influence was certainly exerted and Sterling Biotech Limited now uh, defunct publics and uh, now defunct flag company of the Sandesara group did not at any point of time deserve that kind of loan amounts that were sanctioned to it without proper diligence on the side of the bankers uh, that it later defaulted upon and therefore the enforcement directorate when it says that at least 300 shell companies were set up and Sandesaras who are now fugitives of the law were paying regularly to Mr. Ahmed Patel's son-in-law Irfan Siddiqui uh, in, in cash, various unaccounted for transage of cash were transferred and given to him. It assumes serious proportions. Of course, as I said, it needs further uh, investigations and adjudication in a court of law. But Nikunj, uh, Ahmed Patel has uh, always come out and defended himself. In fact, earlier as well, he had vehemently denied all these allegations when in 2017, all the, uh, the entire ED case really cropped up. Right now, with all the details that you're pointing out to us and to our viewers, how bad does it look like for Ahmed Patel? Because there's a direct link between his son-in-law and him as well and all these people who, are, who you are naming. Well, Aditi, as far as uh, law enforcement is concerned, it looks pretty bad. As far as the law enforcement agencies are concerned, they think that they have uh, 
fit case for at least the interrogation of Mr. Ahmed Patel and that interrogation can at later date also become custodial interrogation. Whether it happens very, very quickly or it takes some time, I am not um, uh, anybody to second guess the investigator's work. But as I said, this is law enforcement. It has to be adjudicated in a court of law. The courts have to say whether the enforcement agency's case is a proper one, whether there is any amount of political vendetta in it, whether Mr. Ahmed Patel was at any point of time instrumental in the grants of those loans, whether the companies actually deserve those loans or not. So that adjudication will happen in a court of law. But as I said, that from the point of view of law enforcement, it looks bad for Mr. Ahmed Patel. It certainly looks uh, politically extremely bad for uh, the Congress party and all of the people associated with it. Because if you see, the, it, it looks from the investigator's point of view that the loans were taken only for the single purpose of single purpose of defaulting uh, on them. And then a huge number of shell companies were set up. That is 300 in all, according to the enforcement directed. And these monies were siphoned off paying off also to the public servants, which the Enforcement Directorate explicitly means. And public servant Aditi, by its very definition, as defined by the Supreme Court, also includes members of parliament, which Mr. Ahmed Patel continues to be. He was one right. at, in, the, in, the, in the UPA era, and he still is one. Right,